There is something about Iguaca, the Igbo form of palm reading, that makes it radically different from anything I've seen before. And this difference will help you fully understand what I shared in the beginning of the video, because the etchings on your hand are only the surface in understanding Akaraka. To understand that difference, I'm going to tell a story. In this story, you'll see, as our ancestors saw, that no matter the situation, things given to you by your chi can never be taken, stopped, or denied by any force, living or non-living, even if you are the problem. This is the story of Omekago. Human beings once believed that matters concerning the awful were matters concerning man in the time of Omekago. But the ancestors say, Uche Chuku Abugi Uche Mado. The wisdom of Chuku is not the wisdom of human beings. This was the lesson Omekago had to learn at the cost of his own blood. But who was Omekago? Omekago was the son of Eze, the ruler and father of his community. Omega Agun was the second son of the Eze, to be specific, coming into the world just after his older brother. According to Iwala, the law of the land, his older brother, the Obara, or first son, would be the inheritor of his father's titles. And as Iwala says, so it shall be. For Iwala are decrees given to man by the sacred, the laws of the creator and the land itself. And no matter who we are or what we believe, what Chineke says will be, must be. For Ndibo say, if your chi says you will be lost, you will be lost in your father's compound. But the Obara, oh, Mekagun's oldest brother, was lazy, mean-spirited, and despised by his father, for he had none of the qualities that made a true son of the soil, let alone an heir to the Eze title. Omekagun was different. Omekagun was the one who his father used to make a name, for Omekagun was handsome, industrious, generous, and just-hearted, all of the qualities befitting a great leader though he was the second son of the Eze. A time came in the Eze's life when he realized he wasn't becoming any younger, and so he assembled the titled men and women of the community, and when they gathered, they asked the Eze, who will be his heir? The Eze, without hesitation, looked at the crowd and said, my second son, Omekago. He then began to sing the praises of his second son. Appalled, the assembly gasped at his utterance. Some ducked their heads in shame, Others, realizing that Yeze was going against the land itself, rose up and walked out of the Congress. For Nibo say, if one sane person follows nine madmen, people will say that ten madmen have walked past them. The cabinet appealed to Yeze to give his all fault to his eldest son, the mean and lazy Obara of the family. But Yeze refused, and instead he sang the praises of Omekago. The cabinet asked Yeze, why your second son? Don't you know that this is an abomination to deny your first son what belongs to him? Don't you know that when a people commit abominations, they will begin to use and sing against each other? And when brothers use and sing against each other, future generations will bear the burden of fixing the error of their fathers. Dieze insisted it will be his second son, for his second son was generous, just-hearted, and handsome. He was industrious and the pride of his father. And as the father returns to Alamo, his people must be led by the best man possible. When Omekagun got the news of his father's announcement, he was filled with joy. He knew that he would be the heir, so in his joy there was no surprise. And as the people protested, Pieze sang the praises of Omekagun, his shining son. But singing was not enough to sway the people, so Pieze came up with a plan. He asked his servant to prepare fine regalia for Omekagun and to bring a donkey. Yeze then instructed Omekago to get on top of the donkey and parade through the town, answering the name of heir apparent. When the second brother saw the parade, he was filled with rage. He ran to Adibia to retrieve Obiensi, the medicine horn. He approached his brother, and in front of the land, the sky, Mado and Mo, he blew the medicine horn in front of all watching. And Omekago, in front of everybody watching, dropped dead. His father was overwhelmed with grief. Quickly he ran to a diviner to learn what he should do next. The diviner told the Eze that he must return to the first son and beg him to blow the horn again. But before the first son blows that horn, the Eze must return to his first son what he had denied him. For that son's right 
as the heir to the title of his father, is a matter of awful. And even when the earthworm is asked, the earthworm answers, It is that I use to dig through the earth. His father rushed to the first son and begged him for forgiveness. In his begging, he gave his son back the blessings he had denied him, the blessings of his birth. And it was then that the first son blew the medicine horn. And as the sound spread through the land, Omekagun rose from the dead. It was on that day that people learned that Uwabu Madu Na Chia, and what your chi has placed in your hand, cannot be taken by any force, living or dead.